we have a very limited time to uh, to take up all our subjects and yes you have a lot of questions questions that are relevant to the like class and our subjects we will be taking up either at the end of the session for the day or at a later date depending on the num time available to us i find from the questions that many of you have gone far beyond our subject that we are dealing it so please wait to get your answer pay careful attention to the lecture you will get your answer there if you do not get it then you can re ask the question and we will take it up our subject now is motor insurance liability insurance and pa three very wide and very different subjects the most common is motor insurance most of you will be dealing with it or will be hearing of it very frequently now there is a very important law and that is the motor vehicle act under this law every motor vehicle on the road cannot come on the road without insurance and insurance to cover third parties who is a third party the third party is the outsider the pedestrian the people who are on the road walking on the road and whom the vehicle may hit or injure or whose property may be damaged so third party is the general public they are covered for any injuries which may be caused to them by any motor car motor two wheeler truck bus or any other motor vehicle on the road so this is a compulsory insurance that has to be taken so if any of you have your two wheelers or any other vehicle and your insurance is not up to date remember you could end up paying a large amount of compensation so please make sure you have insurance as required by the law the court that decides the amount of compensation to be paid is called the motor accident claims tribunal which is mact for short so that court decides the amount of compensation what is the amount of compensation so we have compensation paid for two different elements one is called tppi that is third party personal injury so injury to people or death to people in a motor accident whatever the court awards that amount has to be paid to the family members or the individual injured tppd is third party property damage the coverage as per the law is 6000 rupees so if a way a truck damages a two wheeler which is parked on the road at the side of the road the property damage claim can be paid for a maximum of 6000 but the court it the person who the uh, owner of the to, uh, two wheeler has to go file a case in the mact court and thereafter the court will pay the compensation so this is according to the law and for this reason motor third party insurance is compulsory so i hope vivek you have heard the answer carefully it's motor third party means outsiders not owner of vehicle not owners employees not owners family they are all individuals they are first parties the rest are all third parties so for motor insurance insurance companies have had divided according to the old tariff we have three categories broad categories one is the private cars the cars which we use for our personal use then we have the two wheelers again for personal use then we have commercial vehicles in commercial vehicles we have the goods carrying vehicles we have the passenger carrying vehicles which includes rickshaws taxis and buses we have special tra uh, trailers trailers are in registered individually so we can insure them individually but they are insured whilst they are stored and whilst they are attached to a motive a motor and towed wherever they have to go special vehicles are special category vehicles like ambulances hearses our film stars vanity vans campers all these come under special category vehicles then we have the motor trade so motor trade means manufacturers or dealers of motor vehicles motor vehicles being brought from the manufacturer site to the dealer site for sale that is motor trade road risk 
motor motor vehicles being sent for demo demo driving they come under trade certificate or driver certificate and the last is motor internal risk which is the dealers dealers uh, storage and factory or the manufacturer's factory and storage locations internal risk coverages are very similar but the only difference is that they have they have special licenses for the purpose motor insurance has two types of policies one is the package policy or the comprehensive policy and the other is the liability only policy as you know liability only policy liability only cover is compulsory for all vehicles flying on the road so this cover has to be taken in a package policy it will combine both the liability and the damage to the vehicle damage to the vehicle is called own damage so the motor third party liability only policy covers the requirement of the law that's the motor vehicle act in addition it covers the personal accident to the owner if it's an individually owned vehicle the owner traveling in his own vehicle or driving his own vehicle is covered for an accident cover that is death and permanent total disablement in addition personal accident cover again death and per, uh, permanent total disablement may be covered for the passengers also by an add on and others like employees or others can also be covered in a in the vehicle if it's a by fuel vehicle which we have today both petrol diesel and cng lpg then there's an extra charge for that purpose the package policy a comprehensive policy is a third party liability coverage as we have seen just a little earlier plus the own damage that is damage to the vehicle by some specified perils again like fire a specified perils so what are these specified perils fire self ignition lightning riot strike malicious damage storm tempest flood inundation terrorism earthquake landslide and subsidence burglary and theft accidental damage and transit within india by road rail or air in addition under the package policy towing charges after the damage to the nearest safe place is also covered for a small amount emergency repairs are also permitted for a small amount in commercial vehicles commercial vehicles have ad additional availability that they can tow a disabled vehicle to a safe place and if their vehicle is damaged as a result of the towing their vehicle in damage will be payable under the policy no other private cars or two wheelers are permitted to tow vehicles so if they are towing vehicles and they are dam the the insured vehicle is damaged insurance companies may not pay the loss the policy is covering usage within india only in the case of private cars and two wheelers for social use in the case of commercial vehicles the area is india but again it is restricted depending on the permit that is given a national permit means anywhere in india a state permit means restricted to the state a city permit means restricted to the city usage only consequential losses so after the damage any other expenses being incurred are not covered because these form under consequential losses for example the vehicle is damaged it is lying in for repairs so i am incurring extra costs for traveling by taxi for all my for all my appointments these are not covered any other loss of income not covered war and nuclear risk we have seen in fire it's an exclusion normally contractual liabilities are also not covered a driver under the influence of intoxicants alcohol or drugs and causing a damage insurance company will not be liable for the damage to the vehicle the second important there's in the policy is called limitation as to use the vehicle has to be with a valid permit it cannot be used for racing and other speed trials and speed testing it cannot carry more than its load in the case of commercial vehicles 
the driver who is driving must have a valid driving license at the time of like of driving the vehicle otherwise the insurance will not pay for any losses the premium rates are determined on the zone or area in which the vehicle is flying or is registered how old is the vehicle what is its carrying capacity that is number of passengers or its cubic capacity or its gvw which is gross vehicle weight and the value of the vehicle if we are taking for package policy and that is idv insured declared value it is the sum insured for which the insurance is taken this is worked out as the new price of the vehicle if it's a new vehicle the invoice cost is uh, is the value if it is an old vehicle the new invoice invoice cost less depreciation for the age of the vehicle the depreciation is given in the policy on that basis a depreciation is applied on the new cost and worked out idv so this is the value for insurance in the event of a loss this is the maximum that the insurance company will pay another important feature of motor insurance is the no claim bonus if no claim for damage has been made under the policy for any for a year the next year's policy the own damage premium will have a discount for no claim bonus or no claim since there was no claim made every year continuous year there is no claim for damage to the vehicle the discount will increase starting from 20 for after one year going up to a maximum of 50% of the own damage premium a discount would be available this no claim discount is available only to the owner of the vehicle if the owner sells the vehicle and buys another vehicle he can transfer it but if he buy if there's a new vehicle if he is uh, the new owner cannot claim that no claim bonus he has to pay the premium for the for proportionately for the period when it is transferred in his or her name in motor insurance the types of claims are own damage claims are damage to the vehicle or theft of the vehicle in the case of third party the third party claims are injuries or death of uh, uh, people who have pedestrians on the road or damage to property property includes animals so if a vehicle kills cows or a sheep or goat there is a property damage and it will also be payable under the motor insurance in motor insurance the documents we will file the most important the proposal form which we have seen in our lecture yesterday a cover note may be issued it's a temporary document given to take delivery of a new vehicle where engine number chassis number and particulars of all the vehicle are not yet known so temporary cover a cover note is issued it must be followed with a certificate of insurance so all details must be conveyed to the insurance company and then a certificate will be issued cover note in motor insurance is valid for minimum period of 15 days and can be extended by 15 days to a maximum of 60 days after that its validity is over and it must be transferred into a certificate then we have the policy the document a contract terms when a claim occurs there'll be a claim form to be filled driving license will have to be verified the registration book that the ownership who is the owner will have to be proved estimate of loss has to be given final bills after repairs police report may be asked for so first information report if it's a commercial vehicle its permit and fitness are also required because without that under motor law the registration is not valid if it is a third party claim the court will send a notice and summons and the insurance company has to deal with so the court summons have to be forward to insurance company so that they can appoint a lawyer to defend on behalf of themselves and the insured so these are this briefly was motor insurance we will now go to the next which is public liability act this is a compulsory insurance to be taken by anyone handling hazardous materials when we say handling it means storing 
destroying collecting manufacturing processing so anyone dealing with hazardous materials must have this insurance under this insurance if because of the handling of that material there is a pollution or there is an accident then compensation has to be paid to the persons who are injured for death and permanent total disablements the compensation is 25000 per person in the case of permanent partial disablements it will be a percentage of the permanent total as disablement as decided by the treating doctor temporary total disablement is available for persons over 16 years who are earning an income and who have been hospitalized for minimum 3 days and are unable to attend their work for a maximum of 3 months so a monthly compensation of 1000 rupees will be given to them for that period of disablement so if they have been disabled for just 2 months the compensation will be just 2000 per month 1000 per month that's 2000 in addition medical expenses of 12500 will be available to anyone who has been injured or who has suffered consequences of a hazardous accident property damage like motor insurance is only for 6000 rupees now the insurance is taken for a very limited sum maximum amount of 5 crores per accident or incident and 15 crores in the year there could be a time that the loss could be greater than that because many more people could have been injured in which case when taking the insurance an additional amount is taken and transferred to the government of india's environment relief fund or erf this fund will pay out if the limit under the policy is exhausted this fund will pay out for any additional compensation now an example i would give you all of you are familiar with the gas leak at bhopal so had this insurance been in this law come into force before bhopal each of the individuals the families of those who died in that gas leak would have been entitled to 25000 per person those who were injured would have got medical expenses of 12500 if they were, if they are unable to attend duties they would have got 1000 per month for maximum 3 months so in this manner this is how the law act right because that was a hazardous accident so if such accident takes place in the future first this insurance will pay for those people so it is compulsory for anyone handling hazardous material to have this insurance in place if they do not have the insurance the pollution control board can imprison the person for a minimum of 1 year in addition to a fine of 1 lakh rupees so this is required by law just like motor third party insurance others and even those dealing in hazardous material can take if you see the compensation was very low they can take additional insurance to cover their liability and these are known as standard general liability insurance so one of the most important is public liability we have seen public liability act which is a compulsory insurance now public liability which is available for anybody even you and i could be held liable in the normal course of our lives for example if you are staying on a higher than first story in a premises and you have flower pots and plants on your balcony and if due to a wind the bell from the pot on the balcony falls down and injures somebody passing by you will be held liable to pay compensation for that to that injured party so having public liability if this policy will pay the person who is injured has to prove that you were negligent so they will file a case in a court of law and the court of law will decide and pay decide about the compensation to be paid so this compensation can be any amount and it is therefore necessary to have a public liability so public liability is available for industrial risk that is manufacturing risk and also non industrial risk like offices shops schools colleges 
residences, residentials, anyone can have the public liability policy. All these liability policies, compensation will be decided by a court of law. So the, a court case has to be filed and the, the court it has, has to be proved that it was accident and it is due to a negligent act, then only compensation gets paid. In the case of product liability, it is the defect in the product that has caused an injury or a damage. It could happen that a product, many of you, have come across cases like worms in the chocolates or in foodstuffs. Now, if as because you ate that chocolate and you develop food poisoning or some sickness developed and you can prove that it was because of the chocolate, then you are entitled to claim, file a case against the chocolate manufacturer and claim for compensation. So, product liability is a product branded product which is in the market and as a result of which somebody has suffered by eating or using it. The most common product liability losses have, are taking place because of a defective medicines or defective motor tires. So these are very common but there are many other products that could cause losses or damages or sicknesses to people. So again what we are seeing is somebody who is using the product an outsider is affected because of the use of the product or being faced in a consequence and as a result of which they are liable, they have suffered a loss, they have had financial loss and they can file a suit and claim compensation. Professional indemnity, when we talk of professional indemnity, we talk of authorized professions and those are lawyers, chartered accountants, engineers and of course insurance brokers. So these are professionals, doctors and hospitals. So any negligence on their part as a result their clients suffer, they have to pay compensation. Many of you have read in the newspapers of an operation which has gone wrong or after an operation something has been still left inside the person's body and the person has had major problems thereafter and subsequently found out that sponge or cotton or some needle is inside the body of an earlier operation. So these are all cases of negligence and invariably they go to court and claim compensation for injuries. In fact, you may be aware, those of you in Hyderabad, that the Hyderabad metro at the time of being built one part of the metro came crashing down while it was being constructed, so people were injured. So here also a type of liability came into being. Professionals are those who are guided by certain standards or controlled by certain standards of profession required from their profession, like the medical council, the bar council, the institute of engineers and so we can define whether negligence has taken place or not and allow compensation accordingly. Directors and officers liability. As you know, if a director has not given proper guidance and as a result people have suffered consequences, they could be held liable for not working properly and to run running of the company. Then workman's compensation insurance. This is a compensation for to work employees who are injured or suffer sickness while in the course of their duties. These briefly were the liability insurance policies. The features are all of liability insurance policies will have a limit, two sums assured. One is called anyone accident limit. So one incident, this value and the other anyone year limit. Within the year, this is the total payout an insurance company will pay. The premium rates are depending on the indemnity limit that is also on the ratio of AOA to AOI. So AOA to AOI can be 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 6, 1 is to 4, sorry, 1 is to 4. That is say any one accident 1 crore, any one year 1 crore, that's 1 is to 1. Or any one accident 1 crore, any one year 4 crores. So 1 is to 4. So premium is charged on this plus on the turnover because that is the exposure of the insurance policy to the number of people. 
it is all the risks are classified onto various risk and on that basis coverage is given within this limits the defense costs and legal charges are also payable the a liability insurance are normally claims made policies that means insurance must be running concurrently and continuously to claim under the policy because when the loss is reported and the claim actually comes in there could be many years in between occurrence based policies are on the date of loss on the date of the accident there was an insurance but insurance is not continued so motor third party is an occurrence based policy employees compensation that is what is old workmen's compensation is also an occurrence based policy accident insurance the next prada policy is personal accident insurance it is a benefit policy which means we are not looking at income clearly we are just seeing the approximate income to arrive at a sum assured which can be changed every year it we care play for compens compensate the individual for an accident which will result in their death or in permanent total disablements or in permanent partial disablements so permanent total disablement means now totally confined to bed and unable to do anything permanent partial disablements mean some part of the body is lost it could be a hand a finger two fingers three fingers this is known as permanent partial disablement or temporary total disablement that is for some period of time unable to attend to any duties and confined to home for example a fracture major a fracture to the leg the person has to sit at home for 6 weeks so temporary total disablement in the event of death of the individual if the person is an individual has minor children an education fund of 5000 rupees is also payable per child maximum for two children so in the event of an accident that besides the education fund the expenses towards carriage of the body to the final rights or to the home for a, but up to a fixed amount is also allowed medical expenses can also be taken as an add on and war risk cover can also be taken one more i think health insurance miss ho gaya another another policy that we have to look at and that is health insurance where we are paying for reimbursement of medical expenses if a person has to be hospitalized due to a sickness or a disease or an accident now this is hospitalization only reimbursement expenses are to be paid so the person has to be hospital they must not have an existing health, uh, sickness at the time of taking insurance because pre existing are not covered and so also anything that occurs in the first 2 years with regard to cataract sinus etc maternity expenses are also not covered unless the add on is taken which is available for group insurance so this briefly was our chapters on fire insurance marine and some important motor accident and liability insurances this ends our session for today but before we end up we'll just look at a few questions that have been raised with regard to yesterday's session or the session that was held earlier anil mohalkar has asked what is the to pool a pool means a creation of a fund to pay out for any losses so in india today we have one is a marine hull pool which gic manages and the other is a terrorism pool what it means that every insurance company is contributing some money every year from their premium into this pool to create capacity to pay out in the event of major losses so we are trying to increase our capacity within the country first to ensure losses can be covered and if it exceeds these amounts we then look at 
reinsurance, which we will be saying subsequently in our future classes. We have already talked about marine open policy and open cover as I explained. Open policy means a policy is issued for a sum assured and all de declarations are made up to the, a number of cargo going to different places. So each cargo instead of taking separate insurance for each, we take a more open policy and we keep declaring the cargo for each location or wherever we wish to send it. Each consignment is declared and deducted from the sum insured that we have originally taken. So the open policy remains in force till the sum insured is exhausted or it is reinstated to cover future losses too. So each time the sum insured is being reduced by the amount declared. In an open cover it is an agreement and a deposit is kept. Each and every time a consignment is to be sent we inform the insurance company. They issue a document an official document, a policy for that particular consignment, but it is under open cover. So what they do is, they, it, an open cover ensures that all consignments can be covered since instead of at a later, this declarations can be made at a later date rather than rushing in advance to take the policy each time a cargo has to be sent. So specific policy is a single cargo insurance. An open policy, because I am dealing with so many consignments, I take an open policy and keep declaring to the insurance company that please insure this, please insure this, but I have kept a limit or a sum insured with them to pay for the premium, so that no cargo gets missed without insurance. So ICCA, Rameshwar God, ICCA, Institute Cargo Clause A, which is an all risk cover for export import trade, these policy wordings are used to cover consignments being exported or imported. The wordings are as decided by London underwriters and it is standardized across the world. What is hit and run? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention in motor third party insurance. You have to prove that the insurance was in force, then only the, the person who was injured can claim. Now, if they were injured in an accident and the vehicle number was not known and noted and the person is injured, to whom against whom can he claim? He has no one. In fact, just two days ago, after I finished this lecture, I was going home and an accident took place just outside on the main road. A man was getting off the bus and a two-wheeler knocked him down. He rolled over and another two-wheeler also fell. He was so badly injured, we had to call for an ambulance and take him uh, and the police and he was taken to a hospital. His back was badly injured. Now, unfortunately, there were so many of us waiting, but because the poor lighting, none of us could note down the number of the two-wheeler. So this is a case of hit and run because number is not noted. We could not find. Now, the gentleman who is injured can file a case under the hit and run, which will be paid out of a fund called the Solatium Fund, a special fund created to pay for such accident victims who cannot identify the vehicle in for, the, for claiming against the owner, and so a small amount of compensation is given to them. But he has to file a case under the hit and run clause. So this in brief was some questions which we dealt with on our for chapter 1 and 2. I believe there are a number of questions under for this chapters 3 and 4 already come in, but as our time is running out, we will end up for today. Tomorrow when we meet, I will look at and answer some of the questions that you have given within the time constraints that we have. So to sum up, we have looked at fire insurance, what can be covered under fire policy. We have looked at marine insurance, which includes cargo insurance primarily, since most of you will deal with cargo insurance. Hull insurance, the insurance of ships, is restricted or covered in only the main port cities. That's Kolkata, Chennai, and Mumbai are the places where we will be dealing in that. And that also you will come across very few offices or people. So we will, as you, when you do your associate level, you will be having a chance to do look at that in more detail and understand it better. Now it is just to give you a picture 
Licensate is essentially to give you a picture of the various types of products available in the market and the concept and how insurance has to be practiced. We have seen motor insurance, which again is a common insurance, which all of you would come across in your day-to-day -day work. We have also seen personal accident and general public liabilities, which is again a common thing now today with everyone taking these insurances. An idea has been given to you. When you appear for your associates, then we will look at it in very much more detail and we will have lots of questions and lots of interactions for you. So with that, we close. I close my session for today. I will meet you all again tomorrow when we look at the next two chapters. Thank you.